Thanks for being here this evening. My name is Kevin Conover, and we are broadcasting down here in Southern California on our local radio station, KPRZ 1210 AM, our local Christian radio station. We're also on FM 106.1 in North County. And then, of course, we're all over the uh, Internet, uh, broadcasting on social media and so forth. And uh, we've got a great show coming up here this evening. And a little bit about our guest tonight. His name's uh, Professor Tom Meyer. Uh, the Bible Memory Man. He's also a professor at Shasta Bible College. He's been a guest all over the place on all kinds of topics, including archaeology, end times prophecy, Bible memorization. He's been on Fox News, the Jerusalem Post, Daily Express, CBN, K-Love, Moody Radio, and a whole bunch of other places. And um, <clears throat> you can actually book to speak him um, if, if this is something you're interested in. I think it's pretty incredible um, what he does, but he he takes what he's memorized from the Word of God and gives a dramatic presentation um, in his in his speaking, and so uh, really, really cool. I hope you're inspired this evening um, to be able to memorize more scripture. It's a challenge for a lot of people. I know for a lot of my students, they're just whining. Uh, they get up to you know three verses, four verses, five verses. They're just complaining about how hard it is, and they don't have the genetics for it, or whatever else the case is. But uh, hopefully we can overcome some of those obstacles this evening. Tom, thanks a lot for being on the program today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So um, a little bit of, I'm curious about your background. You know, I, when I was in college, I uh, was trying to memorize scripture. And a friend of mine, he gave me this book. Um, I don't know if you can see it here. Uh, Ron Hood. Ron Hood. Yeah. <laughs> you know him. How to successfully memorize and review scripture. A while back, I was looking for this book and I was like, man, it's out of print. I can't find it. But um, that's what started me to, to memorizing scripture. And I was like, wow, okay, there's a, there's a way you can do this and get it done. And, you know, um, so, so how do you know uh, Ron Hood? <laughs> I don't know Robin Hood. I heard of him <laughs> and I saw the book, but I never met him. Oh, you never it, met him? Oh, okay. No, no. Oh. So, but, so tell us your background, man. Yeah. What how did you how did you come to start memorizing scripture like you do? Well, to answer your question, uh, I grew up in a in a believing home and I uh, went to church on Sundays. And you know, like most kids, I was pretty bored in church. Church should be the highlight of the week, you know, the one hour out of the 168 that really is the summit, the apex, the zenith of your week. Yeah. But I'm bored. And that's not good, you know? So I, but instead to redeem the time, I would just read the most famous, they're not stories, Pinocchio's a story, the most famous accounts in the history of the world. Mm. And I thought to myself, why well, can't, I know we need verse by verse teaching. Okay. And I know we need topical sermons and et cetera, but why can't every once in a while, we just hear the oracles of the living God on a Sunday mm. morning spoken from heart and the power of the Holy spirit. So to make a long story short, I was 25. I didn't have essentially any scripture memorized. And I went off to do my undergrad in Northern California. And on the way, the pastor, I don't know why he waited till then, but he's like, well, you know, why don't you memorize part of the sermon on your mom, sermon on the mount on the long car ride out to California from Illinois. I was like, okay. And then, you know, once I did that and internalized it, I really began to understand the, the value that comes with not having it on your phone or on your shelf, but in your heart. And mm. one thing led to another, to another, and I went off under my undergrad, uh, went off to Israel, to Jerusalem. I did two master's degrees in the Holy Land, and that's where I really kind of, that's the big league, so to speak, of memorizing, even to this day. And took what I learned there, really honed in the skill set, and came back to the States. And um, the rest is his story, as they say. Yeah. So how many books of the Bible have you memorized? Well... <sighs> I never counted because when David counted the people, he got in big trouble, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, I know I could go for like 15 hours straight if I have to or something like that. But I wow. think I know like 20 books or so. Yeah. The first 10 years, I just memorized the, the, what we call old Testament or what they, in Israel, they would call the Tanakh. Uh, that, and then uh, the last 10 years I memorized what we would call the New Testament and what they call there the Brit Hadashah. So um, I'm not Jewish, by the way, but I just have a, and I, I'm not one of these people who's like really into Messianic roots or anything like that. But, um, but living there in the Holy Land, right, it really, it was the greatest thing I could ever do for my faith. It really was. And just be able wow. to rub shoulders with people who, who memorize and, and be able to have access to sources that I don't have here and et cetera. And the li ancient libraries there was just awesome. 
Well, that's a cool plug for making a trip to the Holy Land. Um, so when you say that, when you say, hey, that was one of the greatest things for my faith, um, is it just being able to see the actual places where these, you know, where these events happened? Is that what that, uh, you know, makes your trust in the Lord stronger? Is that what you're talking about? That's a huge part of it is we're just disconnected in a certain degree from the original audience. I mean, 2000 years ago from the New Testament up to 30 thousands, you know, 3,400 years ago for the Exodus. And Mm. it's like, (laughs) you know, we live on the other side of the world, different language, different culture, different mannerisms, different form of government. And we, there's just, you know, it's Paul and Silas and Timothy unto the church of the Thessalonians, Mm. not unto first Baptist church in Cincinnati. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> you know, so but going there and to be able to walk where Jesus walked and to, the landscape hasn't changed, the mountains are the same, you know, et cetera. And then just to be able to to live in that world and and it just makes the text not the text is already alive. I don't like it when people say that, like you make the Bible come alive. Well, it's yeah. already alive in Hebrews four twelve. <laughs> you, you know, but then the other side of the coin was being able to use my gifts of memorizing to what really enhanced my faith as well is being a missionary there and working with Jews for Jesus. It's Jews. For Jesus, I'm not a Jew. I'm a Gentile, and yeah. so <laughs> they made an, a, a rare exception for me because it's a long story. But I, I have a skill set, and I knew the right people. Let's not kid ourselves. And that's what got me onto those teams to just saturate Israel with the gospel. And it's awesome because no matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing, I can talk to Shlomo on the bus or Ace Hardware in Jerusalem and just drop Isaiah 53 on him, and let's talk mm-hmm. about it. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, um, you know, it, it just this brings up a thought. I had um, the head of Jews for Jesus on the show quite a while ago. I believe David his name was, uh, At the time, I Moshe his Wilson name was, is the founder, but he passed away about a decade ago. And no, 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 no. Uh, or maybe he was just a head of one of the areas. Um, Dan Sarad? Yeah, Dan Sarad. That's who I had. I love Dan Sarad. He was the best man at my wedding. Oh, no way. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, that guy is so nice, man. He he was he was funny too. He was cracking me up. We we were going through all the uh uh laws that the the uh Jews, you know, keep uh from the Old Testament and he was showing how some of them are just crazy. I I he told me for the, this was quite a while ago, but he told me you, you can't even push a button um in an elevator on the Sabbath in Israel because you it's can't considered... even kick your nose. You can't kick <laughs> your nose on the Sabbath. Oh, no, I haven't heard that one. <laughs> yes, because you might cut a hair. And if you cut, that's work. Oh my so, gosh. But you know what this is though, in all seriousness, this is what yeah. Jesus was railing against the religious elite during his time. I mean, it's the same thing that they're keeping the traditions of men over the word of God. And yeah. that's what it's all about is the word, what does, is the word of God? That's where the power is at. Yeah. Now uh, this brings me uh, a question I had for you. Um, you know, like you said, it's where people are embracing the traditions of men over um, the heart of God. And and, um, you know, some people might say, well, you have this big focus on memorizing scripture. Is there a temptation, um, you know, the, where the scriptures say uh, knowledge puffs up, but loves build, builds up. Is there a temptation to memorize scripture just for the sake of memorize, memorizing scripture versus, um, you know, the heart of God? Well, I can't, as you know, I can't speak for other people, but for myself, sure. I don't have that problem. Yeah. It's so hard for me to memorize it. It's so hard. People think it's easy. It takes me an hour a day, every day for a month, maybe to memorize like a half a chapter or a chapter. So I don't get caught up in that. But but having that hidden in your heart, I'll tell you what, it is one of the many benefits. The knowledge that comes from it is one of the many benefits that come from the discipline. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it develops so many good habits too, just the discipline of of, um, study and and, uh, preparing yourself before the Lord, setting your heart right and you know, starting your day off. Right. So uh, that's another question. You know, a lot of people, I think they hear about somebody who's memorized this amount of scripture before, and they think to themselves, oh my gosh, um, you know, I could never do something like that. I could never come close yes, to that. Yes, they could. If I gave them a hundred dollars for every verse they memorized. Yeah. There you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So speak to, speak to that point. I mean, for the person out there who's saying, Hey, no, I couldn't do this. Uh, share with us what, you know, um, how do you overcome those doubts and and so forth? Well, part and parcel of it is just, you know, we live in a world where we have it coming from without. We live in a copy, paste, Facebook, tweet, file, forget kind Mm. of world. We don't have to memorize anything. Yeah. And we love it. Like when I was a kid, you still had to memorize phone phone numbers. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't even have to do anything. So 
and then plus we have such an abundance of Bibles, we think it'll never be taken away and all these kind of things. And, and, mm. and so we think that we don't have strong, strong memories or strong minds. But the, the, the fact of the matter is, is we do. God commands us to hide his word in our hearts so we don't sin against him. This is not yeah. an option. <laughs> so he wouldn't command you to do this if you didn't have the capacity. He knit you in your mother's womb. You have the ability to do it. Now, all of us are at different levels, and it's like any other exercise in some regards. The more you do it, the stronger you get. You know. But like I hinted at earlier, it's hard for me too, guys. It takes me an hour every day maybe to do a chapter or half a chapter for a month. But the blessings, the benefits, the dividends that come from hiding God's word in your heart, they really are innumerable. So, so go, let's go through that. Um, if you, if somebody were to say, hey, you know, what are the top three benefits to memorizing scripture? What would you say they are? What is the, what, what are the biggest motivators besides the obligation as a Christian to be able to, to do this and in any way, but um, well, what are the benefits? I might, I might go a little over three, but off the top of my head in no particular order of importance, number one, it informs you and you, when you hide God's word in your heart, it informs you and your kids and your grandkids who you are in the light of God's word. If you mm-hmm. are told something long enough and loud enough, you can have a tendency to believe it, to mm-hmm. believe that there's nothing special about you. You went from ooze to the zoo to you by a series of time and chance that we're billing. That's all nonsense. It's lies from the pit of hell. You're made yeah. a little lower than the angels. He's crowned you with glory and honor. He's given you dominion over the works of his hands. Is your, be, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And as the son of God, you have boldness and access and confidence to approach him in prayer. Do you see how that mm-hmm. changed? As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Yeah. You think that way, you'll act that way. It's true. That's Having awesome. it hidden in your heart versus on your phone or on your shelf and provides you with words of comfort in times of need. No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, you can... Sp- like an apple of gold and pitcher of silver, the most beautiful, precious thing that you can tell to someone in a time of need, which includes yourself. Sometimes we need to comfort ourselves. Let's not mm-hmm. kid ourselves, okay? Is to speak that verse, to speak that word, because that's where the power is at. The power is not in the commentary. The power is not in the four-point alliteration. The power is not in the canned joke. The power is not in the illustration. The power is in the oracles, the oracles mm-hmm. of the living God. And that's to have that in your heart We'll leave it at three, like you said. Okay. Then third and finally, having in your heart, it provides you with your weapon of choice. I think of the Lord tempted in the wilderness, Matthew chapter four, you know that account. What does he do in response to the fight, to the temptation? He opens his mouth and he speaks the word of God. Ephesians six, soldier of God, top to bottom, everything we're wearing. Chapter six, 10 through 18 is defensive. It's all defensive. Breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, helmet of salvation, belt of truth, etc. And your only weapon is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And that word for word in Greek is rima, which means a thing spoken. So it's the power of the spoken word. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And um, now you have four kids. Um, and uh, I know for that, there's a lot of homeschool families that are interested in this subject, too. So um, and for those of you less uh, listening, my guest today is Tom Meyer. If you're more, if you're interested in what he's sharing, the Bible memory man.com, you can check it out. You can have him come speak. Um, and um, you've also written um, the memorization study Bible. I wrote and, the commentary, uh, not the Bible. What's that? <laughs> I said, I wrote the comments and how to. Memorize. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> let's, let's, let's be clear. Yes. We don't want to get anybody struck by lightning or anything, <clears throat> fall down and get eaten by worms. So um so tell us about that. What, what is the memorization uh, study Bible? Every Bible in the world is printed and formatted in such a way where it is not conducive to memorizing. Mm. Um, when I lived in the Holy Land, I discovered three tips on how to go about memorizing scripture. We can get to those in a second. But to answer your question, I took those tips and those techniques I learned while studying in Jerusalem and incorporated that into the format of the text. And so the Bible is printed in such a way where it's easy on the eye. It's printed in such a way where the ands, the buts, the ifs, the conjunctions are lined up. And sitting having this long verse that has no shape to it, short, pithy, eight words or less on each line. Instead of going for the whole stake, you're taking little bite-sized pieces. That's how the ancients memorized. And I use that to format the New Testament. And then also in the appendix, there's, I don't know, 60, 100 tips on how the saints memorized in antiquity, basically a history of memorization from the Jews and the Christians. And then there's some really interesting kind of factoids about the importance of memorization throughout the ages. What did Luther say about it? What did Calvin say about it? What did Augustine say about it? What, when did we stop doing this? 
<laughs> when yeah. did this become something that nobody does, but everyone ought to do? That's cool. So, um, you know, uh, like you said before, you said, Hey, we're, we're used to, we think that we're going to have a, access to a Bible at, at, at any time. And that's what a lot of what's, what's happening in education. I'm a teacher and uh, you're a professor too. And, and uh, you know, people have access to the Bible on their phones and they think, well, I don't really need to memorize it because I have instant access to it. I just pull my phone out of my pocket and I don't, I don't need to do that. Um, so, uh, and I know that you also have a digital app for the, the phone. Do you, do you recommend that people memorize directly out of a, you know, hard copy Bible or is it okay for memorizing on the, on the, you know, phone as well? What do you, what are your thoughts? Whatever works, man, just do it. Like Nike says, you know, if your kid's always on their phone, then put the Bible memory app on their phone and let them do that for part of the time. You know, if yeah. you're a book person, then go with the book. But just because you have so many copies at home and every translation under the sun on your device, that doesn't negate the fact that you should hide it in your heart mm. so you don't sin against him. The, the, the blessings, the benefits, the dividends that come from your life, from hiding God's word in your heart, they are limitless. They really are. So, so um, what are some of the main tips to memorizing scripture uh, for the people that are really struggling with that? Uh, what what advice would you give them uh, to be able to memorize scripture? Well, essentially, there's three different ways to go about it. And there's variants and hybrids. But number one is memorized by reading. The keys are the following. Number one, you have to read aloud. Okay. Nobody in the West reads aloud, generally speaking. Interesting. In, in, in private, at home, we don't read aloud. We don't, we just don't. We don't read your text aloud. You don't read your novel all aloud. You don't read the Bible aloud in the morning. When you're in public, it's forbidden to read aloud. So we just, we're accustomed to not reading aloud, but not that they have everything figured out in the Middle East because they don't, but <laughs> they have that figured out. Okay. They, they get it. You walk by any, past any Quranic school, any Bet or any Hebrew school and talk, talk, it's all aloud. Wow. So not only reading aloud, but the, the power of format, the, the way that the text is, in other words, don't go switching translations on your kids 10 times. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've had the same Bible for whatever, 30 years. I purchased it half a dozen times because it gets lost or the pages are tattered or something. What version I know do you use? I, I am not King James only. Okay. Let me say that again. I am not King James only. I prefer King James Revelations, New King James, everything else is King James, but I have the same Bible. So I know where quote unquote everything is. And you know where Revelation 12 is or John 3 is or Jonah 1 is in your old, that is huge when it comes to memorization. Um, when I would visit in Jerusalem, I'd wander around and get lost and stuff. And I ran into this uh, um, yeshiva, which is like a seminary, Jewish seminary. And, and they, I didn't know this, but it's obvious now that every single Talmud in the entire world, the Talmud is basically like an encyclopedia Britannica sized collection of Jewish laws. It's the bread yeah. and butter for Judaism. Yeah. Anywho, if you, the point is, is if you go from here to the end of the world, it doesn't matter who the publisher is and you buy a Talmud, every single page is exactly the same. It's because of the power of format. So they get yeah. it. We don't. That's interesting. We, it, it's huge. And that's why I don't recommend reading the Bible off your phone. I don't recommend, you know, reading it. I did the hard book bound codex. So, you know, where everything is on every page. That's number one. Did you mm -hmm. want to say anything? I really like that. I uh, no, I'm just, I'm taking mental notes because, you know, I teach a Bible class. I teach Bible, Bible to, uh, to seniors. And I'm just thinking through, you know, our processes in our Bible department out here in uh, San Diego. And, um, I just think that makes a lot of sense. We were just having this discussion among uh, a few people that um, the kids all have Bible, different versions on their phones. They're all reciting in different versions. And so, um, and so it makes a lot of sense what you're saying um, that, that kind of keeping it in format and keeping the, the proper context. And I use other translations when I'm studying, I'm just yeah. talking about your daily Bible. Okay. Yeah. Your go-to. So that's number one. Number two is memorization by hearing. Let me explain a little bit. Originally, keyword originally, the Bible's meant more for the ears than the eyes. Mm. It's been flipped since after the advent of the printing press. Faith comes mm. by. Hearing and hearing, hearing by the word of God. Yeah. Be doers of the word, not 
hears uh, only. Hears only. Yeah. Exactly. There, yeah. There's numerous verses that have to do with that, with the mm. orality of scripture. First Thessalonians 5, here's how it ends. I charge you, which is very strong language. It's like a command kind of, I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read aloud unto all the holy brethren. Mm. When's the last yeah, because they didn't have that. They didn't. They didn't have numerous. They didn't have Bibles everywhere. They didn't have the Gideons, right? So they didn't they, have padded pews, PowerPoint, hand sanitizer around every corner, and orange mocha frappuccinos to sip on in the last row. Okay? Yeah, this is like hot, <laughs> dusty, bloody, and persecuted and illegal. Yeah. Anywho, but it's really meant more for the ears than the eyes. It really is. So, yeah. uh, I would recommend. Um. I have a friend, for example, in Indiana who drives from Fort Wayne to Muncie every day and back two hour drive in the car. And he listened to a chapter of Romans over and over and over and over again. Well, mm. you know where this is going a year and a half later, Roy has the entire book of Romans memorized. Roy is not the type of person who will stand up front on a Sunday morning like I do, which is a different gifting to a certain degree mm. and speak it from heart. That's not why we do it anyways. We do it so we could have it hidden in our heart so we don't sin against and we have it in there. So it dwells richly in us, mm, mm. but just from sitting in the car and hearing it, I compare it to reading Mozart versus hearing Mozart. Like you could read Mozart on the page all the day long and say to yourself, I'll bet you that sounds really amazing, mm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but then when someone who knows who has it memorized, who knows what they're doing, who believes in it, who could do it with their eyes closed, plays it. It just takes on like a totally different dimension. It's the same thing, but it's kind of sort of not. Mm. And the Bible is not meant to be boring. Okay. Look at the book of J in Jonah. Look at how many different voices you have. Narrator, Yahweh, Jonah, captain, mariners, king of Nineveh, etc. I mean, you have all these different personalities and voices going on and it's not flat and boring. It's like Mozart. It's up, down, up. So listen to it. And along those lines, then I'll let you jump in. I have kids, like I told you, four kids, 10 to five, the best they, way they memorize and the best way for those tuning in or have their kids or grandkids memorize is by hearing it. Um, you know, not everyone can do what I could, can do, just like I can't do what you can do. When my kids go to bed at night, you know, I'll tell them a couple chapters from memory and we'll dramatically act it out and get into it and have fun with it and make it, That's awesome. you know, yeah. but you can press and I do the same thing when we're done, we just press play and you can do that. You can press play on the iPad or whatever, when they're in their rooms and let the word of God wash over them when they go to sleep, mm -hmm. they will memorize it. Do not wow. doubt me. And you will have tremendous content fodder to talk about at breakfast the next day. <laughs> you know, I love it. Anything love on it. that one? Well, I just brought to mind also that, um, I don't teach ninth grade Bible anymore, but we would go through all the narrative portions of scripture. And a lot of times in class, we would play the, um, the narrated version of scripture where they have the different voices, like you were saying. And uh, it's been quite a while since I've done that. And I just, it, it definitely, um, and then I'd have them read a lot aloud in their Bibles with the narration that was going on and everything. And so um, it just does, it just really brings the Bible to life to hear the different voices. Like alive? you said, I'm sorry. It's already what? alive. Oh, I <laughs> so that's right. <laughs> it's already alive. You threw me off there. I was like, wait, yeah, we're alive. Okay. So yeah, no, it's, it's, it's already alive, but what it does is it, um, I think, like you said, listen to the voices. And so what it does is it helps you to listen to those voices and make the separations, see what's actually happening. It takes all, all the monotone away, like you're saying. So that's true. Uh, and yeah. it's very engaging, you yeah. know, it's very engaging just to hear, you know, the book of, revelation from memory or genesis 1 to 11 from memory i mean yeah there's nothing like the spoken word of god and then third and finally memorize you new kids and grandkids can go about this by writing it so we had first we had reading second we had hearing third reading or writing i should say let me explain a little bit uh, it ties in with the memorization study bible a little bit so i write out each verse old-fashioned pen and paper and just write the verse out over and over and over and over. Say it when you write it, your mind, your eye, your hand, your mouth, your ear, then all work together in unison. And I don't know how many more members you can, you can use than that, but whether you write it or whether you read it or whether you hear it, and we can talk about this if you want, we want to retain it. Mm. We want it to abide in us, mm. to have it hidden in our heart. And that's a whole different subject. Interesting. Not, not in one ear and out the other. Um, I want to, I, I do want to um, explore that a little further with you. Um, so 
you know, when somebody's decided to start and and they're inspired, they they see what you're doing and they're like, wow, yeah, I can, I I am persuaded. Um, I really need to make this a bigger focus in my life. Um, do you have any recommendations as far as okay, here's where I think you should start? Should they do like you and start start in Genesis? Should or, or is there another focus that they should have, or is it just is it wide open? What do you? What well, do you we're all we're all wired differently, as you know. I didn't even start in Genesis. I started okay. in the Minor Prophets and mm. and Joel of all places, because we're all yeah. wired differently. I'm more of like, and you know, the the end is nigh. <laughs> this is it. Apocalypse <laughs> kind of literature. Yeah. That's my. At first, I should say, I've grown out of that. Not that I should or shouldn't have, but I grew out of, right? But that was like where I started in just apocalyptic literature. Yeah. And then I moved on from there to narratives. And I even did the Song of Songs, which is Solomon. So I'm, you know, well-versed. But, you know, I would recommend, if people don't know where to start, I would recommend, number one, do not do individual verses necessarily. Like individual verses scattered abroad. Mm. I would I would recommend more to do like a, a psalm, a chapter, and maybe if you did Jonah or Titus, for example, either one of those, you could do the whole, if you did one verse a week, which you could totally do if you wanted. Like we said, what if I give you $100 for every verse you memorize this year? Do you think you would get, right, a little busy? <laughs> of course you would. Yeah. But what is that, what is that filthy lucre compared to the oracle's that which is more precious than rubies. There's no comparison mm. whatsoever, but we don't act like that. You know, yeah. we just don't. But if you just did Jonah, for example, or Titus, one verse a week, the whole year, book done. Okay. Wait, I'm sorry. Say that last part again. If you just did one verse a week from Jonah or Titus, you could do a whole book in a year. Okay. The complete one verse book. per week. So 52, 52 That's verses. It. Yeah. Okay. At Christmas time, you could have the whole book of Jonah memorized. That's cool. You yeah. could have two or three or four Psalms memorized. And you do that year after year after year and keep it or retain it, which is the hard part in a different story, right? You look back five, 10 years from now, if we're st still here and he hasn't taken us, <laughs> you know, you have like a ton hidden in your heart and that's good yeah, stuff. It is. And so um, you said, you know, I don't recommend, uh, you know, picking a verse here, a verse there, you know, whatever the case. Um what, what, what is, is this because you want people to get the idea because scripture was make, meant to be taken in the context of the entire, you know, book, not in, uh, not a verse cherry picked here and there. Is that, what's your thought process that, behind that? Yeah, it's part of it, Kevin, but also part of it is I want people to, I want to replicate myself. I want to make walking, talking little books or mm. walking, talking big books. And Look, we live in a time in the church where the orality of scripture has been shattered. Mm. We don't you don't even hear we don't even hear the word of God. Mm. I mean, we read it, we don't read it aloud, we don't hear the voice throughout the course of the week. When we go to church on Sunday, we sing about him. Maybe if you're lucky, they'll do a reading from a, a psalm or something like that. And then we have verse by verse by verse teaching and preaching, which is all great, exegetical preaching, teaching. I know who you're talking to, mm. but we don't hear God's voice you just hear a verse and then have it interpreted and applied, which is awesome. But some, you know, we just need to hear his voice and the people more often than not are smart enough to, to get it, to discern it from themselves, to interpret it for themselves. When you, when you speak an epistle, for example, to them. Yeah. It's not real confusing, right? It's not, no. it's not written in some obscure language or, or, uh, you know, it's perspicuous. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so, um, have you ever thought about becoming a, a, a preacher or a pastor? I'm an ordained minister. Have you ever have thought a, about starting a church and, and do, doing like, a, you know, going through it like that? Well, the short answer is yes, but I have to wait until I'm 50. So I have 164 Sundays left, I think, until I'm 50. <laughs> and so I'm going to use my, I have a unique gift and I need to use that gift Hmm. and not hide it under a bushel, but there's going to come a point in time. Cause I'm in a different church every Sunday. Yeah. But there will come a point in time in about three and a half years or three years from now, when my kids need to be as teenagers, especially in the same church every Sunday, not yeah. in Iowa this week in Florida next week and mm -hmm. New York the following. And when it comes to that point in time, I've been seriously praying about that when I'm 50 that I'll retire as the Bible memory man 
And then I already have my Timothy. His name is Timothy, by the way. He's one of the people who told the whole New Testament with, from memory with me. And we'll see what God does. But I think that's a good possibility. Maybe in where I live near the Creation Museum in the Ark Encounter, maybe in the years to come, maybe it's to plant a church. But it wouldn't be your usual church, I'll tell you that right now. Not only because I have a double master's from Jerusalem and an emphasis on archaeology and et cetera, but the church service would be the sermon, the 45-minute sermon, half of it would be just the oracles of God. Yeah. And then the other half, some teaching and application. That, that'd be so cool. Yeah. And I think that'd be such a, a great example to so many pastors to, you know, to get back to emphasizing scripture and, and making that more of the focus, right? That's just it. Cause my best friends in the world are pastors. Yeah. And it's not a knock on their character in any way, shape or form, but they don't no. memorize. They'll be the first to yeah. tell you if they're honest, my best yeah. friends are professors. Okay. And it's not a knock on their character. They love the Lord with their whole heart, but they don't, they're not actively memorizing. Mm. So if the professors aren't doing it and the pastors don't do it and the parents don't do it, nobody does it. And it gets pushed off on the five-year-olds in Awana. Yeah. And these yes, things are and not Awana, safe to be. <laughs> I've had, I've had Awana leadership on and uh, just because it's so stunning, the amount of uh, scripture that they memorize um, and all they do. And I just thought it was very, very cool. But yet the Bible says, this is how we're transformed, right? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so, and yet, uh, like you said, we're, we're missing, a lot of times we're missing that. There's just such a lack of focus on that. Um, so I really well, we're, appreciate it. We are it. making headway against that. We really are. We're chipping yeah. away at it by a different church every Sunday and our resources. And last summer, I was awesome. I was able to volunteer, speak at the Creation Museum 70 times, got to speak to people from all over the States and inspire wow. them and to instruct them to hide God's word in their hearts so they can go home and do the same. So there, there are a few of us out there amongst you <laughs> who are <laughs> trying to inspire you to memorize not just individual verses here and there, but a whole book. Yeah. So uh, for those of you listening, my guest is the Bible memory man. You can, um, his name's Tom Meyer and you can visit him at the Bible memory man.com. Um, check out his memorization study Bible. It's a great uh, way to, to do that and to, to begin memorizing and, and hiding God's word in your heart personally. Um, and then um, Tom, can you repeat, just summarize again, I'm sorry, those three tips you sure. gave for scripture memorization. And I hope we can talk about how to retain it, but the yeah, three we're going to do that, go we're do that right it. next. Yeah. Number one is by reading aloud and not only reading it aloud, but staring at the page because of the power of format. Mm. Number two is through hearing. Okay. Redeem the time in the car and turn off whatever you're listening to and just listen over and over again to first Peter chapter one until you get it or whatever. Mm. Then yeah. the third is to write it out. That's how I happen to do it. It's helped me memorize 20 bucks. It's hard. It's difficult. I do have a life. I have full-time ministry and I'm married <laughs> with four kids under 10, but I've, it's a priority to me because I know how important it is to God and how important it is to my spiritual life to have God's yeah. word hidden in my heart. Okay, let's talk about the retaining part here. Um, obviously, that it's useless if it's if it's just in and out, and then it's uh, not useless. Like, yeah. The, okay. The, the, the Talmud. The Talmud says not that I'm a fan of the Talmud, but they say yeah. it's like bringing a dirty, like bringing a dirty basket down to the river and then washing it in the river, and even though it all just goes right through, it still mm. is clean the inside. Mm. So it does. There is an advantage. But you're right. The goal is to have like first John 2 14 to have it abide in us. Mm. The question is, how do you do that? Yeah. Well, to make a long story short, it is hard work. It is repetition. It is review. It is what the Bible calls meditation. Mm. Uh, first John, or not first John, Joshua 1 8. This book of the law, the Bible shall not depart out of your mouth, or in Hebrew, it should literally rest on your lips. Mm. And you shall meditate, meditate on it. Meditate on it what, day and night. Exactly. And but what does meditate mean? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But what does meditate? We don't even know what meditate. We think of mm, what they do in yeah. Mount Shasta, where I used to <laughs> live up in Northern California. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but the idea there is, remember, Josh was talking to a, a semi-nomadic sheep, goat, shepherd, farmer kind of people, okay? An agrarian people. And the, the paint the picture, it's of a beast chewing straw. Mm, yeah. Hay, whatever, exactly. Then swallowing it, then regurgitating yeah. it, thinking yeah. upon it, swallowing it. Again, so the idea of calling up, think upon, chew upon it, put it back. Call it up, think upon it, chew upon it, put it back. That's what it means to meditate. It means to repeat. Mm. It means to review. It means to mull over. Mm. How does that look in your daily life? It looks mm. something like this. Whenever you have downtime, 
which I know some of us don't have a lot of, but some of us do have some downtime. Not yeah. always, but in your uh, downtime. A lot, of, a lot of people spend a lot of their downtime on, uh, <laughs> you know, going through social media nowadays. So it's true. <laughs> we have more, and we have more time than we think. <laughs> it's true. But the way it looks, Kevin, is just to repeat to yourself what you know from memory in order from Genesis to, Genesis to Revelation as much as is possible throughout the course of the day. If you can do that, if you could repeat those verses to you, it keeps them sharp. It keep, keeps them from being not from not getting rusty. It keeps them mm. right there on your lips, on your tongue, on your front lens, and they're ready to implement and to use in any situation that may came up. But it, that takes work. <laughs> and, you know, I, I highly doubt if you walked up to an average believer and you said, can you tell me right now what chapter you're meditating on? <laughs> They'd be like, excuse me. Oh yeah. <laughs> like what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. You know, but but I'm in Jonah chapter three. So whenever I get downtime and the word of the Lord, I'm I'm in line at that fine French store, Target or Walmart or something, and I'm just thinking to myself while well, I'm in line, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, mm-hmm. "Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach and cry against it, for their wickedness is come." Oh, I'm sorry, that's chapter one, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Hmm. That's where you're at. That's where your head's at. You're setting your affection, your mind, your heart on things above, not on things of the earth. You're focused on the words hmm. of God and then applying those to, of course, your daily life. Hmm. That's fantastic. I love it. <clears throat> and so when you say um, that we want to retain that, and uh, so the difference between you know the basket that's washed and the basket that retains um, how does this in, in, how does this flesh out practically? What is the difference between the person that just went through the washing and the person that actually exactly. is retaining that? Um, it, here's how it looks in my house because they've retained it. They, mm-hmm. they know, they know that it says be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ like, hath forgiven you. Whereas mm-hmm. if you don't, ret- you don't, you don't know those words, you may have, a concept of the idea, but it's not the word of God. Mm. I know the concepts based in the word of God, but to know the exact word, the verbiage, right? That's what we're going for. That's the retention. And, and, or, you know how it could look a million different ways. A soft answer turns away wrath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not going to say what I want to say. That's how it plays out in daily life. Yeah. And that's the, that's the amazing thing about scripture is that I, it was funny. I had a student a couple of years ago, we, I have the students memorize script, all these different scriptures and <clears throat> you're making me rethink a, a few things as I'm, as we're talking, but I, I have them specifically pick out verses that are relevant to them so that they can go, they can see how the word of God applies to their regular lives so that they go, Whoa, this is, this is not some ancient book written 2000 years ago that no longer applies to my life. This is the word of God that is living and active and is useful for all that, you know, my life. And so this kid goes, he goes, <clears throat> the word of God has something to say about everything. He goes, everything I look up, there's something on it in the word of God that God says about this subject matter. And that for me, that was just like, so heartening. I was like, yes, you get it. <laughs> right? This is, it's life-changing. It, it changes everything. And uh, it makes you into a totally different person because well, it's now totally all of a sudden, sufficient. yeah. You respond totally different to your life situations. Everything is now sifted through that grid of God's perspective. But and, if we yeah. that's true, but if we don't have the word of God hidden in our heart, what are mm. what is that grid we're sifting it through? Is it just bits and pieces what you think you may have learned at church on Sunday over yeah. the years? Yeah. Or is that grid Matthew 5, 6, and 7? Yeah. Uh, I, I, it's, it's funny too, because I've had so many situations where somebody's come up to me and said, the Bible says this. And I go, where, where does it say that? <laughs> and they're like, well, I don't know. I'm just pretty sure it says that. And I said, mm, I don't know. You better go back and, and, and try to find that. And, and that's, that's one of the benefits that come from memorizing is it makes you a Berean. It makes you a better student. You yeah. know, you know, when someone yeah. right, is off track, you got it. Yeah. You can call that on it and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not the character of God. Where are you getting that from? And so that's just that's just encouraging. Um, well, uh, for, again, for those of you listening, my guest is Tom uh, Meyer. He's the Bible Memory Man. And, um, you know, uh, thebiblememoryman.com, if you'd like to have him come speak, 
um, I am uh, absolutely sure that you would be blown away by I'm actually going to approach our chapel leadership and see if I can get you to come speak at our school. I think that'd be so cool. Um, but uh, tell us real quick, what is the great recital behind you, the the poster you have behind there? <laughs> you know, um, to make a long story short, um, I wanted to do something special, something very unique for the glory of God. So I said, okay, I'm going to take all of the contacts that I've made the last 20 years reciting scripture every Sunday to a different church, and I'm going to try and find a team to tell the whole New Testament from memory, word for word. Wow. Well, easier said than done. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I put this team together, this A team together. And by the way, they're just normal people. Yeah. Okay. They're just normal people who you wouldn't pick them out of a crowd, but they just love the Lord so much that they, that they, and they value and they treasure his word so much that they hide it in their heart. Mm. But I needed someone to do Matthew and Acts. Like, how am I going to find someone who knows the gospel of Matthew from memory? That's like, wow. Okay. And then lo and behold, praise the Lord, I got a piece of whatever, fan mail or whatever. And it was a retired school teacher in Kokomo, Indiana, who he's like, I have the book of Matthew memorized if you ever need me. And I was just like, praise the Lord, you're working through this, Lord God. And then I found someone to do Acts as well so there were seven of us we did the whole thing from heart i'm pretty sure that it's the first time it's ever happened at least yeah. i have looked through all of the, the councils not all of them but many of the councils and and events and, and i've never found where the whole new testament was recited of course they read it aloud and you've, you see those even to this day right people will read the bible out of the church and take a turn but but this is reciting it from heart. So God really blessed it. And uh, we're really, really proud of what he did for his glory. Yeah, that is really cool. Um, you know, I was doing a little bit of research. I was reading up in it and it said, um, I was looking to see if there's anybody that's memorized the whole Bible. Uh, and the only person that popped up was Noah Webster. But I didn't, it said that they couldn't prove that he actually did it or did not do it. Um, do you know of there's anybody that's that's done that? I, I've heard of someone. I'm not going to say their name because oh, I don't okay. believe that she did it. But oh, okay. it's just like, how can you have the whole New Testament memorized word for word? And maybe over the course of your life that you were able to do that. Okay. But you, there's but no not way in you one. can retain it. Yeah. There's yeah. no way you can retain 27. In, for example, in the Hebrew Bible, the original autographs, the Hebrew Bible was meant to memorize. It's full of memory tips and mnemonics and helps and puns and word plays and acrostics and all those kinds of things to do that. But mm. you lose all those, those helps in English. You, they're yeah. gone. And so I, huh. I just don't like it when people say that because oh. it makes it like that. I don't like it when they say, I have the whole New Testament from because they don't, number one. And number two, it makes it so like, rare air and so like i can't do it i can't memorize yeah. and yeah yes yeah. you can you can hide god's word in your heart that's great that's great well um tom i really appreciate your time and and uh, being on the program and i love what you're doing and uh i really am going to talk to our chapel department and see if i can do you ever speak at like christian high schools or uh for sure yeah okay because because we have a bunch of speakers that come out for our chapels and and uh, all different. And I think that'd just be such a wonderful focus. So um, thank you so much for what you're doing. And uh, I'll be praying for you uh, over the next three years and what uh, what happens. And, <laughs> yeah, we'll talk and, uh, later maybe and see yeah, what happens. Yeah, what looking for, forward to seeing your uh, what you do. <laughs> what, are your what are your thoughts? Uh, this just popped in my head. Um, what are your thoughts? And maybe this is, might be a you, you never know what's a controversial question, but, um, you know, Calvary Chapel with Chuck Smith, the movie just came out, um, Jesus Revolution, and he had a big emphasis on word for word through the Bible. Um, what are your thoughts about that as far as uh, do you have any opinions in regards to, you know, preaching on Sundays as far as going word th for word through the Bible or uh, what, what do you think? I'm not your average pastor. Yeah, I, I'm whatever word you want to use. And so, you know, not that I'll be doing this forever, but when I yeah. come on Sunday, it's the whole book of revelation from memory or it's first John from memory and how to memorize, or I I'm pretty laser focused on like, you know, not. I need to from like, that. Exactly. Like, this is why I'm here. I'm just a guest. This is just for today. You know, but I want you to be inspired. That's the key. That's the number one word I get Kevin when I'm done with a yeah. presentation like you inspired me and that's what it's all about to inspire those listening to hide god's word in their hearts so they don't sin against him 
Yeah. And I love that too, because um, it's just like, kind of like what you're emphasizing here is letting God speak for himself. And uh, exactly. And that's another thing that like I, we had touched on at the get go is like church should not be boring. Church should be engaging. Church should be dynamic. Church yeah. should be the highlight of your week. You, you, you want to hear from God and mm. there's no better way to hear from God than to hear his word. And I know mm. we need, like we said earlier, verse by verse teaching and preaching and application, exegetical sermons and all those kinds. I get it. But you know what? Maybe once a month or once every now and then we should just have someone like me come and just, it's like Paul is your guest speaker or Moses or yeah. John's your guest speaker <laughs> yeah, in the 21st yeah. century. Yeah. And, and it's just boom. I love it. I love it. I think that's a great way to end the program today. Um, thank you so much, Tom, uh, for what you're doing and much needed. And um, you guys, uh, again, that's the BibleMemoryMan.com. Please, please uh, take some time to check out what he has, the Memorization Study Bible, other resources that he's provided. And then, of course, you can um, take him up on the opportunity to have him come share. I mean, you're not going to find um, something as uh, amazing and unique as this uh, anywhere, really, honestly. So, um, check that out. Uh, we do have coming up not too far down the road here. Jason Lyle is going to be with us talking about the James Webb telescope and, uh, that incredible evidence that again, um, supports the truth of God's word and creation. So, uh, thanks for being here. Looking forward to being with you another time in the future till then have a great day and God bless you. When you need tires or service, count on Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service in Oceanside for a full range of affordable options in all the brands you trust. See their great customer reviews and special offers online. Hours Tuesday through Friday, 7.30 to 5.30, and Saturdays, 7.30 to 5. Call Dan and his team at 760-439-1631. Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service, 2405 Oceanside Boulevard in Oceanside, 760-439-1631. Luke Gibson of LG Equipment supports Educate for Life with Kevin Conover. Luke grew up in the construction industry and now serves LG's commercial and residential customers throughout Southern California. Whether you need grading, paving, hauling, demolition, on-site bulk water service, water trucks, tankers, and towers, call LG Equipment at 619-998-0924. Learn more at lgequipment.com. 619-998-0924. How can you live in San Diego and miss out on enjoying the water? Fast Lane Kayaking sells popular Hobie Cat kayaks that you pedal, not paddle. That means your hands are left free for fishing and fun. Just throw these on your roof rack. They're light and they're easy to use and maintain. Just rinse them off. Try one free on a demo ride. For 36 years, Ron and Debbie Lane have served San Diego with fun, family-friendly water sports of all kinds. Learn more. FastLaneSailing.com. 619-222-0766. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teachings. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans.